Hi folks, this is a walkthrough of how to deploy the Brighter Days contact tracing application solution part one covering how to deploy the SharePoint lists via Power Automate. We use an automated solution to do that, um, run via Power Automate. So you first of all need to have a SharePoint site collection and this one's called COVID-19. You need to copy the path to the site. That's the first step. Then jump over into Power Automate and you're going to want to import. Um, you should have several zip file um, exports to import, and we're going to import one SP lists format or whatever the name of the file is with the first one, which is the import of lists. So jump onto that, click import, um, you'll get the upload screen. Click upload, go to your location where it is. This one is called, uh, for this example, is SP lists WinTech, but it will, it will be called one SP list and then the name of the client we're deploying it to. Um, let that import. And then once it's imported, you have a couple of reds. Um, we want to make sure that we, so now what we want to make sure that we're not updating, we're creating as new for the lists to be indexed and we're going to call it deploy tracer SP list index. This is indexing the lists um, as they come in. And then we also want to make sure we've got a, a valid SharePoint connection for this tenant. Um, it's obviously exported from another tenant, so it's going to be linked back to that old tenant um, in terms of the connection used. So we want to create a new connection. If you don't have a connection to SharePoint on this tenant, click create new and follow the, the, the wizard to create a new connection. You will have to authenticate as part of that connection build, uh, but it's dead easy. Um, just click and go. So click that one, click save. We're all ready. We'll graze instead of reds. Uh, we click import and we should see those go green. Okay, so that's now imported. We've got green lights on both. So we want a next step. We've obviously copied the URL of our site collection and we're going to go to this flow now of Power Automate and we're going to open it, make a change to a variable and then we're going to run it. So click on my flows and then it should be sitting there. Click on the pencil, open up the flow. Uh, you'll see this is a straightforward step by step workflow but it does use multiple scopes that call SharePoint um, with HTTP requests to build the lists and list columns and view items and list items that are required for this app to run uh, one after the other. It doesn't take very long to run it but it's way quicker doing it this way than actually trying to create the lists via the UI. So we manually trigger it, we only need to run it once um, but we are going to make a change to variable first of all and we're going to replace the value for the variable to match the site where we're going to deploy in this site collection. We want to change the name of the app. Um, this is just in the description fields of the SharePoint list. They just have um, this is a variable. Um, to show you how we use this variable within the application. In the scope, inside each scope, there's multiple HTTP requests depending on what we're building, but this one's going to create a SharePoint admin list. Um, and you can see we're using the site prefix so we don't have to recreate the link or the post link for the URL into each of the steps in each side of each scope just saves us time. Um, and then to show you how we're using the name of the app, um, we can basically again site prefix and then I'm creating a list item here which is using that particular item for things like locations. Again, for the descriptions of lists, uh, we just add that. And then there's a lookup list, so we're going to get the GUID of the um, ID, which is the GUID of the locations list, and then we're going to create as a variable, and then I'm going to reuse that variable inside of um, lookup columns. Now, a lookup column, when you create one with an HTTP request, is going to want a um, slightly different syntax for the JSON packet. Uh, we want lookup list ID and then the output, which is with that item. Um, just helps knowing how that's coming in. And then to show you, again, just contact tracing, contact tracing for the app deploys and um, each of these columns if I click on date from we should have a index no one of these will have an index in it so we are indexing all the, the key important we can't index a look a look a lookup column um, but we can um, index other columns that exist um, inside the app if there's single sort of standard columns okay so we've created the um, connection to, or create the variable. All we need to do now to deploy this app is to save it and then test it. You can click test and it'll click save and test at the same time. And we just, it's a manual trigger, so we only need to run it once. 
Once you've run it, you want to disable it so that no one comes in and tries to do it again um, without changing the, um, the site. We don't want to replace all the lists, but just click test. Let this build out, get ready. It will probably will ask you for a location to know where you are. And then click continue and then run flow. There's a few clicks there um, and sometimes the button for run flow kind of waits for a second and you kind of end up having to click it a couple of times. But all we do then is just let this flow run. And depending on your speed of connection, the initial run may take a few seconds or a minute to get started. Um, notice that we're just getting green lights on the connections. There are a couple of delays inside of each of the different scopes. So that delay is just happening there. Um, it's just a 15 sec delay, um, just to make sure allow the site to build and then go and get that site zero. And then we move through to the next um, scopes which build out all the different lists that we're gonna build as well. And they will just keep popping up. That's probably 10, 15 seconds per one, um, but quicker than doing it by hand. All right, so after a minute or so, you'll have green lights all the way. Um, and then to confirm all those lists have been built inside your site collection, go back to your site contents of your receiving site collection, click refresh, and you'll have all the items. And we've got one column there with a tracer admin list item which will have the just the URL of the site showing and then the app uses that um, inside of it. Now, quick thing there are, we do deploy bubble names and bubble members and buildings and rooms. They may or may not be needed as part of the application. Um, it's useful to um, have them included in the big wrap. We can just delete them if we don't need them, but depending on the situation, but the, the app, the two types of apps we can deploy, one looks for bubbles and bubble names, the other looks for rooms and buildings. Um, slightly different depending on the site features they're deploying, but it does help um, to have them in the start. Contact tracing, contact tracing of the key um, lists that we're using in this, and this is a brand new site, so it's gonna ask me a couple of questions, but if I wanna go through, I can have a look at the list settings, um, and I should see some indexed columns um, within my fields as well. So index columns, oops, I think I clicked too early, sorry. There we go. So we've got our indexes. We've only got eight of the 20, but that's enough to um, help us get through. And we'll go, we can look at the location or worked from column, which is a lookup. And we should see that that is linked to locations. Uh, we're getting, oops, getting the title of locations in. So it's all worked as expected. Um, eventually, as part of the cleanup, you're gonna wanna make um, Bubbles, bubble, bubble names, buildings, contacts, locations, rooms, tracer admin, tracer app signance, useful links, all read only um, to your members and then just enable contact tracing and contact tracing archive to be um, anyone um, can contribute to those lists. When an item is created, we do run a different job that makes item level security on each item so that people can't delete or edit stuff um, directly via SharePoint. Um, but as part of the cleanup, you will want to make sure that those are, um, you break inheritance and you remove the members group from each of those lists. Just stick with the owners and have um, visitors read and then make sure that everyone is in the read members group. Cool, that is our deployment of the um, data sources for the Friday Days Tracing app. Any questions, please reach out.